Thanks. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Um, this is the Sorry, I had a message in front of the agenda. This is the July 12th meeting of the uh, steering committee for the Vermont Climate Council. This is a meeting that we invite our um, co-chairs of our subcommittees to, to share with us their progress and, and other items of um, importance to all of us. Uh, so the, we'll we just run through the agenda. Um, we're going to hear from the subcommittees on coordination and get updates. We are going to discuss a public engagement plan that's going to be presented by um, folks from RISE Consulting and Kara Pike and Meredith Herr from Climate Access. And we're going to take up any miscellaneous steering committee business we may have and then take public comment. So I get and review and approve the minutes um, during the miscellaneous business. So I guess what I would ask is there, um, any suggested changes or additions to the agenda that people would like to bring up today? Hearing none, I think we're ready to, to roll. Excellent. All right, thank you, Secretary Young. Welcome everybody. Um, I think I know everybody on this call. If I don't, my name is David Plum and I'm helping to facilitate these meetings. Um, <clears throat> the first thing, the first block uh, of our meeting is really focused on getting ready for um, the presentations and the work that we'll do together at the next Climate Council meeting, July 26. Um, and so we're really going to dive into that in a couple ways. One, talking about a sort of uh, presentation template. Um, and two, giving a little uh, flag of what that meeting might look like. Uh, and then three, just doing a quick round robin on the different um, subcommittees to see how folks are doing, um, particularly as it relates to getting ready for that meeting. So that's our real, real first block. And we'll, we'll jump right into that. I wanna make sure we do leave time, however, for the public engagement conversation, which we wanna start at 145. So let's just keep track of our initial conversation and make sure we're leaving enough time for that because that really is gonna take that full 35 minutes that we have planned for it. Okay, great. Um, so I know that uh, <clears throat> Marion and Jane and others have been talking to some of the subcommittees and some of you all as co-chairs about the format in which uh, we're hopeful um, content will be shared with the full council at our next meeting this month. And we wanted today to run through uh, a template um, and talk about that for a little bit and what that might look like on the 26th and give you a little flavor what that meeting might look like. The steering committee hasn't really talked about it yet, so this is very draft, um, but it's relevant in terms of subcommittees trying to understand what is being asked <laughs> in the time that's gonna be given and in, in, in the sort of level of detail that we'll be able to get into this month. So to kick this off, I would ask Jane or Marion or both um, to walk us through um, the presentation sort of template and what we're, what we're hoping might be a, a sort of structured way or a helpful way to share all this content from the subcommittees. So Jane, do you wanna kick that off? Yeah, afternoon, everybody. Um, I do, I feel like Jared, but it's been so long since I've seen you all <laughs> um, with a week off. So thank you for making the time this afternoon. We do have a lot to get through on this steering committee agenda. So I'd like to run through the presentation that Marion has been working hard on um, with input from David and I, as well as many of you to date um, briefly. Um, recognizing that there'll be a chance for more substantive uh, feedback as we roll out the presentation templates to the subcommittees this week, later this week, recognizing that cross sector has also already seen it, um, and Marion's done a great job of uh, working to incorporate some of that feedback, and where we haven't, um, I'll try to speak to that those comments today to further support and reinforce where there's still some discussion points needed with all of you around how we communicate uh, the strategies and recommendations at this point um, and at this uh, level of detail. So I just want to back up real quickly and suggest that um, these presentations have been created um, in an effort to support the pathways and strategies that are coming out of cross-sector 
rural resilience and ag and ecosystems at this point. Um, there will be four templates for cross sector specifically, um, recognizing that their work doesn't batch up the same way, perhaps, but we can discuss that today um, as ag and ecosystems and rural resilience um, task work does. And so um, there'll be six separate presentations that we expect to be packaged and put together at the July meeting. Um, and we're going to recognize that many of the presentations, um, well, I should say all of the presentations have the same upfront information that you'll see today um, in the template, and that we do not expect that information to continually be repeated by the co-chairs who present um, the presentations at the July Council meeting. My expectation or thought to date is that um, myself or Marianne together will put together and present the first number of slides that are overlapped um, in order to sort of give a picture for how we communicate those slides thoughtfully as we reach out to the public and then allow co-chairs or whoever you delegate to present your strategies and recommendations to dive into the meat and substance of the presentation so that we're not duplicating as we go. We've chosen to present um, the transportation presentation today to all of you, recognizing that Marion uh, did a dry run through to cross sector last week. Um, and we've incorporated that feedback here um, and, again, have further questions around that. But what I'll try to do as I go through it um, slide by slide briefly is highlight um, where things will sort of stay the same for all subcommittees or recognize the deviation when we get to uh, non-mitigation uh, pathways and strategies for presentation. So let me hope Zoom that cooperates with me and share my screen. So again, um, the intent here is that each of the, um, the, the three subcommittees and then further refined within cross-sector will come together and present um, their pathways and strategies and recommendations for the July council meeting. Um, the transportation tax force um, has been led in this case by Gina and Joey. And so the expectation, although I suspect we could discuss that a bit, will they all facilitate the presentation to the full council when we meet on, in July later this month. The first sort of suite of slides, as I alluded to, create some context, um, recognizing that these presentations will then be posted online as well as used um, later on. We'll talk about this with Climate Access and RISE in some of their outreach that we talk about um, and engage around in the public engagement plan. And so we intended to create some background as well as context setting for all of the task groups so that any one um, presentation could be a standalone um, and put out there for people to consume and digest and have some um, understanding of where we are in the process. So the idea being here that as we speak to the development timeline that we're able to highlight where we are in the process with respect to the initial development of strategies and recommendations, recognizing in tandem where we also are with respect to public engagement and feedback, as well as the technical analyses that are still to come. So a recognition that this is really draft, it's initial, it's intended to go out for feedback and intended to inform how we um, develop the modeling and scientific analysis behind all of these. We expect um, perhaps uh, Marion and David and I spoke a little bit about this this morning, the idea perhaps that if Marion or I take the lead on presenting the presentations to the full council, that we would move this um, information about the specific uh, leads guiding this work later on in the presentation so that it's not back and forth between whoever's presenting. So this would come later. And before this, there was um, also a recognition of feedback that there's been um, a specific amount of um, discussion around our intention around public engagement and where we are and aren't yet with that. And so perhaps um, what we'd like to think about as you look at the presentation today from Climate Access and RISE is, is there some um, information that we can pull from their presentation and perhaps feed into further refining either this slide or the a slide between here and there that talks about the public engagement plan and the process that we've undertaken to date and where we intend to go with the co-creation of the climate action plan. 
So we intend to further elaborate on public engagement at, um, in some way in this template um, and just are waiting to see what climate access and rise show us today. Um, we'd like all of you, um, if there are specific considerations to help inform, but this slide from your own vantage point, but we recognize that um, it's been a similar process to date for all of you and that we were going to flush out what that looks like here in order to have gotten to the point that we are right now. So a recognition of the participation that you've had, public engagement in the meetings um, that you've been holding, um, the comments that we have or haven't to date and where we wanna go with respect to um, further refining workshops and presentations. Recognizing the unbelievable amount of work that's been done out of Just Transitions and where we are with respect to that work, um, uh, we felt like it was really a critical component of these presentations to speak to the equity as a core component of the work um, and how it informs and guides the development of the pathway strategies and recommendations. So we pulled straight from the Just Transitions definition and put it um, into the presentation to enable us to speak to um, the equity as a core component of all of our development. I'll get to um, how we batch that up with respect to the other criteria that we're thinking about as we think about um, the strategy development. We put in a slide um, around with those guiding principles and recognize that um, as we give these presentations and as we think about them, that we'll want to ensure that our language is correct and how we briefly and succinctly describe what is actually in a tremendous amount of thought and um, intention behind each one of these principles. Um, but we intend to speak to them as the basis for the work that we've developed to date and how we've included them in guiding um, and setting parameters around the work that we're developing. And as I alluded to, the intention here being um, this was built off of um, what we talked about at the council meeting in June, a recognition that justice and equity is certainly key to our development of our strategies, but um, justice and equity is only one component of multiple criteria that we're thinking about as we put together a package for the full climate action plan, recognizing that pathways and strategies will be elevated as we're able to identify their co-benefits, the cost effectiveness of each, how we meet um, and make progress towards the reduction requirements, and their um, technical feasibility. And then a recognition that the way we've built the climate action plan outline is identification of both the short-term priorities, what is the work that we know we can hit the ground running with as soon as this climate action plan hits the fan, so to speak, and where do we need further work, um, the long-term priorities, the work that we know we're gonna need to do to get to 2050, but we're not quite ready to implement yet. And of course, that will all be sort of batched within the three buckets, um, broad buckets of the work that we're thinking about, mitigation, sequestration strategies, and resilience and adaptation strategies. Specifically, um, I would assume I can't see my full slide, but I'm um, sorry. With specific to transportation, um, the intent here is, um, is the idea of focusing in on building the case for why um, mitigation strategies are necessary with respect to the transportation work or with respect to any of the work that you all are gonna be presenting on and speaking to. So this is the intent to sort of bring home whatever graphics, whatever intent, um, information that you have to make a compelling case for why the work is needed with respect to the bucket of work that you're presenting on. This slide in particular is intended to focus in on um, the modeling and data and the timeline and needs. So we adapted this after um, Marion spoke to Cross Sector last week, recognizing that um, the feeling from them was we don't have a lot of that data yet. Um, and so it would be uh, wrong for us to create an, a perception that this, these strategies and recommendations are um, built upon the best available science. While much information is known and we should say that, show whatever data we have, it's also important to understand and underscore, I should say, um, what's still to come with respect to our work with CADMIS and what we want to know in order to build the most comprehensive pathways and strategies with respect to the work that you're speaking to. This slide um, we talked also about this morning, um, this, is, this will carry forward across all three of the um, areas, mitigation, sequestration, and resiliency and adaptation. 
Um, for, for mitigation in particular, this one might be a bit, well, not a bit, it is easier. We know what the goal and the reduction targets are, um, and we don't have that set or a framework yet for ag and ecosystems and rural resilience, but it's something that we, as we've been saying and spoke to at the June meeting, it's something that we're striving for for the Climate Action Plan, whether that's quantitative or qualitative, I think that's still to be determined how far we can get. But I think that um, for ag and ecosystems, I don't want to put words in Abby and Billy's mouth and they can speak to this, but I suspect we, we could at the very least say here, no loss of sequestration potential. And we could speak to the 2050 goal um, or required um, requirement of net zero. But here we could elaborate on what else we want to get to, or perhaps the process for defining what a vision or a goal would be for, um, ag and e for sequestration. So here, at this point um, in the presentation, all of the next slides allow you to focus on the pathways. And I think this is where discussion might um, ensue around the level of detail here that we do or don't provide. But at this level, what we're seeing come out of subcommittees, it feels clear that we're not going to be presenting um, at the strategies or recommendations level at this point. Um, we're going to be thinking at a pathways level because of the, just the sheer number of ideas that are coming out of all of the subcommittees. So the intent here would be to list those pathways out at a high level on this slide and then to use the remainder of the presentation to further support each pathway by um, illuminating um, a number of strategies that build the case as well as some example recommendations. So this will really need some thought um, and work from all the task group leads and then subcommittee leads about how you're communicating and bolstering the pathways um, that you put forward um, within this at this moment in time and how we then use it to communicate with the public. So and any supporting data um, or other um, information or graphics that you can do on each slide will only go to bolster it further. Um, and that's really all that we have with respect to a template. Um, I think much of it will stay the same, as you can imagine, um, that it just goes on further and further um, to allow you to put in how many pathways and um, how many strategies you want to highlight. But that is um, all that I have. Oops, sorry. <laughs> um, and welcome, Marion, please, um, who's been keeping this um, moving along last week and working with all of you to add anything I might have missed. Um, and then welcome any comments or feedback on how we communicate this and how you feel about actually putting this together um, over the course of two weeks from now. Great. Marianne, is there anything to add on your end for this? No, Jane catches up quickly, so she covered it all. Great. Okay. Um, all right. I Just before we uh, go to any questions you all have. I just want to be clear about terminology then. Jane, I heard you use a sort of hierarchy of terminology of pathway being sort of the highest level, right? Then strategy. And then you talked about recommendations. Is that is that your hierarchy of language that uh, folks yeah. are working with? So after um, Ag and Ecosystems uh, subcommittee meeting two weeks ago, where we all were struggling with terminology and hierarchy, Marion did an actually an excellent job of test running um, a, a suite of definitions that um, I actually, as I was presenting, thinking, Marion, that we might want to think about including in this presentation um, in order to be clear both uh, internally about the hierarchy that we're using as well as um, outwardly communicating what we mean by all the terms. And Marion, you're welcome if you have access to it, or we can circulate this after the fact to all of you, the slide that Marion um, has since shared with some of the subcommittees. Great. Sorry, I can post a link to um, slides that have the definitions that were presented to Ag and Eco last week. And it's Thank you. pathways, uh, strategies, and actions. Action, yeah. Pathways, strategies, actions. Okay, excellent. Okay, <clears throat> so um, obviously it's going to look a little different with uh, rural resilience and with ag and ecosystem um, uh, subcommittees. However, I just want to make a pause here and say, does this feel like the right level of guidance for you all? Um, are there any confusions you have about which slides you're supposed to be building out and which ones really Jane and Marianne will be 
responsible for. Any uh, questions or doubts folks have right now about this or comments? Richard? I, I think the some of the task leads in cross sector are not quite sure which slides they're literally preparing and which ones they're going to rely on Marion for. And I don't know, Marion, if you've been in conversation with those folks, but it, it might be a good idea for you to feel like you need to touch base with them just so they're individually clear. So Marion can speak to this too, and I'm sorry to, in, to interrupt her. She was going to talk, but I, I think that as the templates are rolled out, um, th that it'll be clear um, because the, the sort of intro slides at the beginning um, are my expectation is that those will be re further refined by um, David and Marion and I, but all of those, the, the, the data, the modeling data slide, as well as the suite of pathways and further on will be the responsibility of task groups and or um, subcommittees themselves as a whole to fill out. And just to add to that, so I think Richard's referring to a, a sort of tangential conversation that occurred at the cross-sector mitigation subcommittee where some of the task leads were looking for additional assistance on the slides that they have to fill out. Um, Richard, I've since heard from task leads and no one has requested that assistance. So it looks like once we're able to share after this meeting today, um, a clear template of here's what, you know, Jane is presenting at the climate council meeting and then here's what the task leads are expected to present. My understanding was after that meeting, none of the um, task leads reached out asking for assistance, but I can follow up to clarify. I think that's fine. And that's, you're right. I was responding to that conversation. Um, and if you think it's been resolved, then that's terrific. And I mean, we have Liz on, we have um, the transportation team on. Uh, we just, and I assume that Peter's got the non-energy under control. So it's really just the buildings team to make sure that they are uh, plugged in with what they're expecting from you. Okay. Great. Sue, I see your hand. I saw your comment. Do you want to um, say that out loud? Yeah, and I also just want to say this is the first time I've been uh, sort of exposed to some of the thinking and the way that you're uh, working to present the thinking to date. And, and for me, I think it's, it's very good. Um, and I will want to see how we might be able to integrate the public engagement process details uh, potentially more in that intro slide. I like the term pathways. I think it's appropriate that we're at that level now, it sounds like for the most part. Um, so because I haven't been into the details, for, I can just say from a total outside, for me, it, 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 it's, um, it, I like the presentation. But I also want to offer that I'd like us to consider, and I don't know if this is the right moment because it may be premature, but that we actually have a whole slide that comes into play at some point that actually presents some of the evaluation of equity, you know, as we've all discussed these guiding principles so that we know that that's been processed at some level and, and thought about and, and evaluated as we as we go forth. So that was my suggestion that we include room or consideration of that, maybe now or maybe later in the process, but that really articulates that that we've actually gone through the process of, 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 of digesting those principles that we just established. Thanks. Thanks, Sue. And I think it's always <clears throat> a dilemma whether you weave that in intimately in when you go pathway by pathway, right? So in each pathway slide, you could say something about equity and or these other criteria that's in that, that uh, pinwheel <clears throat> or that wheel. Um, or you pull it out and make it a separate thing and say, and when I look at this package of pathways, this is the sort of equity story I'm seeing in it. Those are two ways of dealing with it. Um, Lauren. I have two questions. The first is uh, clarifying for Jane. Jane, did I hear you say that there are going to be six presentations for which are going to be the individual task leads from cross sector? Okay, in which case, since Agon Ecosystems has about four and a half tasks 
going on right now, is it going to be a similarly allocated time for each presentation? Because that will really inform what level of fidelity we can get to within our strategies. Because we have we have four task leads too, and therefore a lot of strategies developed. Yes, as of now, and we'll look at the agenda um, next, and we can move into that now. But as of now, it's, we have it clearly, we have it broken down evenly amongst the six presentations. That's sort of, we yeah, can, let's, look at the, <laughs> let's look at this. But I appreciate that comment, Lauren, and um, understand. I also, um, yeah, 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 let's look at it. Yeah. Abby? Um, just wanting to say that the conversation came up in our subcommittee last week as to how and when to incorporate literally the word equity or equitable. Um, and I don't know that we did have, I can't really remember what we did come away with with the specific um, decision, but it, the point was made that uh, if equity wasn't considered within each pathway and each strategy, et cetera, you stand the possibility of having that sort of as a siloed aspect of the work, whereas like we were thinking of it that we want to make sure that equity is embedded within the, the core of all of the work as it's being evaluated. So I don't know if it's helpful to know that, but that was something that did come up on Friday. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, Abby, that reflects a little bit sort of my comment of like the two ways of doing it. If you can weave in some sort of story around equity directly into the as you're talking about each pathway, or you do it at the end as sort of a consolidated conversation about equity. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think the question of timing on the agenda is uh, an interesting one. Uh, if you can think about our challenge of doing that, I'm happy to share my screen with at least what's on the page right now as a draft agenda. But before I do that, are there any other questions or concerns about the PowerPoint in this template and how you'll be working with Marion or Jane on it in the next two weeks? Any other questions folks have on that? Great, okay, so let's look at um, a very draft version of <clears throat> um, the, um, next uh, July 26th agenda. I'm just noticing it's on this, it's great. So it's, it's hyperlinked now to this. You have to refresh your page. Here, I'll drop it in the chat again. Um, <clears throat> it's hyperlinked on that if you wanna look at it there. I'll share a Microsoft Word version uh, from my screen, if you give me one second. <clears throat> So this is a, a four hour meeting. As always, uh, for the last several months, we want to have this moment of reflection and inspiration around the just transitions conversation, equity conversation to start out with. Jane uh, has been lining up another speaker and we would do a somewhat shorter version of that than we've done the last two times, but we think it's important to do that. So we'd spend um, about 25 minutes doing that to start out with. And Jane can say in a moment uh, who that person uh, likely will be. So that gives us the rest of the meeting to have these presentations. And we wanted to save a little time at the end to circle back on the just transitions principles since they will be with uh, some updates. Um, and the way I've thought about doing this, since there are essentially six presentations, um, because of the way the task leads uh, have, have worked in, in cross-sector. And cross-sector always was really had a wide purview. Uh, I imagined spending uh, 40 minutes each on uh, rural resilience and then ag and ecosystems, and then spending an hour and a half all together with cross-sector um, where we may lump two together, for instance, buildings and transportation, you could lump that together in a combined uh, presentation. Obviously the task leads would, would do their respective presentations. It would be 
shorter than uh, say the rural resilience presentation. So it's combined 25 minutes instead of a single 20. Uh, and so this is one way to do it. Uh, essentially you're giving more time to rural resilience and ag and ecosystems um, uh, for the overall presentation, even though you all have task leads as well. So I'm just not quite sure if this is gonna work, but this is a proposal um, to make this work. And knowing that uh, cross-sector mitigation was always uh, bulked out with a lot of scope um, across all these different sectors. We would leave some time at the end of the meeting to speak briefly about the just transitions principles and public comment, and then we'd, we'd finish up at 1230. Okay, so that's one way of doing this. And it's tough with the timing. I know everybody's got a lot they want to present. Um, so let me stop sharing for a sec and see if there are reactions to that. Liz, I see your hand up. Sure. Um, preliminary reaction, I guess two things just to limit my comments. One is that if we do keep cross-sector uh, somewhat separated by subtasks, the order and grouping of those subtasks should be really carefully considered and specifically energy is really in service to building and transportation largely. It's not totally, but that's largely true given uh, the emissions reductions already achieved in that sector. So the one thing I wouldn't do is probably group it with non-energy and there might, and my second comment is this might actually be a way um, to take up uh, what was said earlier about ag and ecosystems maybe we are not quite thinking of cross-sector correctly and that even though we've been doing everything in separate um, co-lead groups, we should for this try to bring everything together um, because there are cross-cutting recommendations that really do go across each, I don't know, it just, it feels like maybe we're doing that wrong, that we should be reconsidering that. Okay, okay. Um, uh, similar reactions, other reactions that folks have? Abby? Um, I would just offer in response to that comment, Liz, I would just offer that I think it, I think for our subcommittee, it is a really helpful exercise to have the task leads come back together and then we all presented and then it's really interesting to see where those overlaps come and it almost provides um, a really quick filter as to the recommendations that are immediately going to go higher up because if they've come up multiple times in, a num in all the different task groups, for example, then it's almost assuredly a strategy that needs to emerge from the subcommittee's full recommendation. So I, I think I personally found it to be a really helpful filtering exercise and I think a good exercise for the committee as a whole. Um, but, you know, that's just offering, you know, how it happened in our group. That's great. Thanks, Abby, for that insight. So I think the this goes back to cross sector then. Um, <clears throat> thinking about your process in the next two weeks, is there a space to do that? Can you imagine what that might look like um, when you present it, right? Um, there is, I can imagine there still is some value in pulling out things that are really focused on transportation or things that are really focused on buildings or the other sectors, um, but is there some way you wanna think in a cross-cutting way uh, over the next two weeks? Richard? Yeah, I'm scratching my head on this one, frankly. Um, I think we need that cross-sector folks would need to hear from ag and ecosystems in particular uh, first before we could combine forces. And I think, of course, ultimately we will need to think across the committee buckets, but that it would be hard to do that in the next two weeks. I just don't think that's likely to happen. And it sounds like Abby's thinking similarly, but I may have misinterpreted what she said. Well, I heard something different. Yeah, I, I was thinking within cross sector, it might be a helpful um, 
exercise for your subcommittee to do. If, it, if you haven't, I don't know, I apologize. I haven't been at any of your meetings um, to bring together your separate task leads to filter through your pathways and strategies together. I don't know if that's something you've done, but that is something that we did in Ag and the Ecosystems last week. And it was, I just found it to be a really helpful exercise. Well, we, we have communicated our strategies um, across the full committee a couple of times. So we, we've gone through that exercise of bringing the task leads together to, um, to share with each other what they are. Um, but they are, they do fall somewhat into separate buckets, except as Liz pointed out for the uh, electricity sector is in service to both transportation and buildings. And the, um, and that I think is pretty well understood. So the task for us right now isn't, do we understand better how um, power sector policies need to embrace electrification of transportation or support that? It's what we don't know is what, what we need to hear from your committee about any cross connects between ag and ecosystems and buildings and transportation and et cetera. So, and, and that step is still ahead of us. Yeah, and it's okay if that step happens on July 26th. Right. Well, it starts on July 26th, yeah. maybe, and exactly. and I'm I'm looking forward to that. And and so within our committee, I think we have pretty good cross communication. But within, uh, but between cross sector and ag and ecosystems and rural resilience, for that matter, uh, we have had less communication. Right. Okay. Jane, and then I'm just conscious of time, so I want to switch gears. If we if we can do that, Jane. Yeah, two, two quick comments then. Um, one, I just want to, my rationale around um, the idea of keeping them separate has really been around the statutory requirements, um, the respectful of the fact that the mitigation strategies have to be allocated um, across each of the um, sectors that we've articulated and how the task leads were formed. And so there's been some um, recognition of keeping it separate. I completely agree though that where there's significant overlap on pathways specifically, we should be capturing that. And those are things that will go into the climate action plan um, at some higher level and be discussed. Secondly, I just wanted to respond to TJ's comment and ask that David and Marion speak to this also as before we transition away from this topic. But um, there's been a lot of conversation about what is the outcome of the council meeting on the 26th and the, these presentations. Um, is it a decision point? What is the council being asked to do? Um, what we didn't have ready yet today, but intend to share are some framing questions. Um, this in no way is a deciding point for the council. We're not voting in any way on sort of what goes forward and what doesn't, but we intend to pose some framing questions as well as utilize um, a, re a real time voting reactionary, um, I feel like I have to use your quote, David, and call it like an inspire on meter, where yeah. we talk about like what the inspiration, what we're all reacting to as we're seeing this in real time. And so David and Marion and I will be putting some thought into how we do that productively um, so that we're receiving the right level of feedback at this juncture um, and also providing a space for um, guiding that um, discussion at the council meeting. Thanks, Jane. Absolutely. This is not a, a, a sort of, you know, a vote up or down by pathway moment at all, right? This is, we're, we're very early for that. What we want to have happen is some conversation around them, some initial gut check of sort of overall package, how are we feeling about it? And that's the inspirometer idea. Um, and and, but it's that sort of initial conversation. We're not in a position to start to say, yes, this, no, that, right? We have all the public comment to do. We've got uh, additional equity uh, analysis to do. There's a lot to do before we start to get to that level of, um, you know, feeling like we have the confidence to say, oh, yes, this, no, that kind of thing. 
Okay. Given the time, I'm just wondering, <clears throat> instead of doing some formal like check-in with every subcommittee, I would be interested to hear um, from the subcommittees that are going to present on the 26th, the three subcommittees, are there any other updates you want to give us about um, or questions you have about how to show up on the 26th ready to go? Is there anything else you want to share now from those three subcommittees um, about sort of overall how we doing towards July 26 or pending concerns? Anything from those co-chairs? Richard? Well, I would just like to emphasize certainly how cross-sector feels is that um, we are reluctant to go deeper into details before we've had uh, and we've tested ideas through an equity lens before we've had a, a much greater input from the public and before we've had uh, an assessment as to cost effectiveness, costs and magnitude of impacts from the consultants. So I would be very reluctant to, to suggest that what's happening on the 26th is, is much more than a, um, you know, a presentation of our best thinking to date about ideas that need serious consideration. And it, knowing that we have the, at least those three things in front of us in order to um, advance to the next step, and I'll even pick up on the conversation we just had about wanting to make sure that we have communicated um, with the other subcommittees. You know, there are cross connects to rural resilience. There's cross connects to ag and ecosystems that fold into buildings and transportation in, in a big way. And, you know, we're just not there yet. And I think if we pretend we are, it will be, a mistake and misleading to the public. That's a great spirit for this, Richard. I think that works well. Are there other um, folks from those three subcommittees that have pending doubts before we switch gears and talk about, um, well, I wanna pause and talk about just transitions in science and uh, data for a moment, but before we do that, Liz? Yeah, I'm just reflecting on everything I've heard after raising the question of whether the agenda organization is kind of, you know, in the right format. And I guess I would say, as long as our next council meeting is meant to show in sort of list view, the various, you know, more narrow uh, subgroup strategies that have been discussed, then I think this agenda will achieve it. The, the part I'm having problems with is, uh, you called it an inspirometer or something. I don't think we have as either a subcommittee, at least cross sector, or as a council, or through work that staff has yet been able to do, had the sort of overarching tie together that really would be needed to start to call these even pathways that will eventually be promoted. Like Gina's comment in the chat about you know, there are things here that are overarching, like electrification, for example, as or fuel switching. I just don't feel like that work's been done yet. And I'm not sure the agenda that we have in draft form is designed to do that. And that's fine as long as we're all comfortable with it. Just don't think we should assume that it's going to do more than it is, though, which is essentially present in somewhat list view to everybody, the individual work the subgroups have been doing all at once. Yeah. Thanks. Billy. And thanks, Liz, for that. And to echo Liz's comments, I think on the other end of the spectrum, uh, ag and ecosystems task groups have generated north of, I think, 200 potential strategies at this point already that you know we still need to do a lot of refinement of and filtering. Um, we're absolutely not going to be able to present all of those. Um, so we're going to, what we're going to present is a very small set of our potential pathways. So I think just reinforcing the idea that this is going to be kind of a representative glimpse of the work that we're doing, and it's not going to be inclusive or exclusive. It's just going to be a, a snapshot of, of the, of strategies to support the larger pathways. And that's really what the focus is. Right. 
and articulating those larger pathways, I think Billy is part of it too, right? Being able to say, these are the big ideas, right? Uh, and here's a sampling of uh, strategies that could get us towards these big ideas. Right. So I think just making sure that whatever materials are memorialized online are clear that those lists are incomplete so that people aren't getting the wrong idea. Got it. Okay. All right. Um, we are a little bit behind, but I do want to open up a space for just transitions or science and data for essential updates if you want to share them. Um, I know from just transitions, we talked a little bit about saying a word about the um, what you're doing with input you've gotten on the guiding principles. Does one of the co-chairs want to say just a word about where you are in your process? Sure, I think that's me. And then I think Sue and Kaya, if you guys wanted to jump in at all. Um, just to say, um, thanks everyone for the great feedback and input um, participating in the workshop. We met with our subcommittee and uh, pulled some of that feedback into some themes that we've discussed. And um, we're working this month on um, either and responding to it um, and making additional edits or changes into the uh, the principles and the tools that we've created based on that feedback and and some of the sometimes the feedback we don't think merits changes but definitely merits some explanation and so that's a part of our thinking as as well um, just in terms of where we're at so um, I can take more time to talk about some of those things, themes, David, but I think based on your agenda, yeah. Okay, that sounds good. And But um, Kaya and Sue, did you wanna add anything else? And just, I did put a, a, a comment in the chat box. I don't think that we need 10 minutes on the Climate Council agenda, because I don't think we're, based on the timing of our subcommittee's work, that we'll be really have anything to present. So we could cede that time unless Sue or Kaya disagree. Great, okay. Great, thanks, Sarah. <clears throat> and from uh, Science and Data Committee, I won't take much time, but just a lot of the information we're developing is not gonna be ready for July. So I think we're much more likely to uh, have some time in the August uh, uh, council meeting, um, you know, technical consultant, and then our committee's recommendations with regard to the inventory, social cost of carbon, and other, um, you know, update on the LEAP modeling and some of the impacts analysis um, that that Richard was talking about. Um, I, I think we'll be a lot further along with that. And um, I, I can stop there for today, unless Perfect. Jared, you wanna add anything. That sounds great, thanks TJ. Okay, sorry. Okay, so we crunched up a little bit uh, those updates and thanks folks for being synthetic in that. I'd like to pivot now to the public engagement piece because it's so important. Um, and we have uh, folks from uh, Climate Access and RISE Consulting with us. I see Kara, I see um, Meredith. And at one point I saw Sarika as well. Um, and so I'm gonna turn it over to you all to do a presentation. Uh, we do have kind of a hard stop around uh, 1, uh, 220. Uh, so I'll just give you a heads up to uh, think about how to handle that presentation so we have time for some conversation on the back end of it. Um, and I don't know, Jane, if there's any other intro you want to give or just um, have the folks just jump in. Um, no, I, I think we're good to go. I, I, just a reminder that um, this presentation is at this um, critical point as we're wrapping up phase one of the um, contract with Climate Access and RISE and moving into launching uh, phase two, which is really the implementation of the public engagement strategy that we're going to discuss today. So thank you so much for everybody being here. Great. Great. Thank you so much. And I'm going to present on behalf of the team today, but uh, sorry, Tom Meredith are uh, available for any questions that come up. Um, so thank you for the opportunity to present our draft uh, public engagement plan. Well, I'm going to just be walking through this at a high level. We have um, a document in the works that we'll be sharing uh, electronically for comments that has, uh, will have all the details, but for today's presentation, just really walk through uh, it at a high level. 
And just to kick things off by uh, reminding everyone what we're aiming to achieve through this public engagement process. So we really wanna hear from as many Vermonters as possible, including those who are most impacted by change and those underrepresented in decision-making. And uh, we really wanna make sure we're engaging people early uh, in the process and, and throughout to the completion. And I think it's really important just to uh, think about what is really like, what do we get out of this? What are we aiming to achieve? And we really want to make sure that we are incorporating local concerns and knowledge uh, into the plan. It results in better policies. Uh, it helps uh, with the implementation in terms of more support and the willingness of stakeholders to be part of achieving the goals outlined in the plan. So, um, in terms of what influenced uh, this uh, strategy, we've had a number of meetings with ANR staff, Climate Council and subcommittees. We reviewed a number of materials, public opinion polling, uh, media conversations, background reports. We held uh, round, two roundtable discussions and interviewed a broad range of stakeholder groups. So we got a lot of great input in the process. And moving ahead, um, one of the things, and we appreciate everyone's help, is we did uh, develop a very large list of stakeholders who should be engaged in this process. And um, that list will be used throughout as we reach out to folks and ask them to partner with us to do this engagement project. Uh, in terms of who we specifically spoke to, so we had uh, 38 people overall that we talked to. 16 were one-on-one -on -one interviews. And then we had a total of 22 roundtable participants in the uh, combining those two sessions. Uh, next slide. So the the public engagement plan. The first we will do a roll up of what we heard. So the audience analysis uh, part of 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 our deliverables. Uh, we'll be outlining top level messaging as well as uh, how to themes for different stakeholder groups, and then engagement strategies. And with the framing, what we really wanna make sure we're doing is uh, conveying the relevance. You know, what does this issue mean for Vermont? What does this mean for your community? What does this mean for you? It's also really important that we translate so that people make it accessible for people to uh, get into this conversation. So most uh, audiences don't need, you know, the, the detailed technical information. Some do, and that's gotta be part of it, but we really wanna be making this an understandable, relatable issue. And while we uh, wanna be very clear and direct about the risks, we also wanna make sure we're uh, emphasizing what are those pathways and what are the benefits of the different solutions that are available. So moving into uh, the overall framing, um, it is helpful to come up with a name for the plan. And this is something that other states do, local governments do. So for example, Maine has uh, their plan name, Maine Won't Wait. Uh, one of the things that we heard across all of those interviews is the Vermonters value from an independence of the lifestyle, but also uh, community and helping neighbors and coming together uh, to address challenges. And so uh, we're recommending Together Vermont as the overall name for the plan. And then we've outlined what is the challenge and making it, again, relatable for people. Uh, what is it that we can do? And in this case, we're making the choice about this plan. Like this is the time to come together to uh, really address this challenge and come up with with strat bold strategies and then the opportunity is a resilient thriving vermont for all and that for all is in there intentionally because we really want to make sure we're speaking to equity uh right away in in this framing so moving into the engagement uh aspects just wanted to mention a few things because i know we talked earlier about co-exploring risks and co-creating the solutions and that co-exploration of risk, you know, this can be done in a number of ways and we'll talk about that when we get into the strategies, but we really wanna hear from people, how is this issue impacting you? What are your concerns? 
uh, what are the ways in which this is affecting your life? Uh, we're, again, I, as mentioned earlier, really want to incorporate that local knowledge. And it's a great way to um, get innovation. You know, we open up the conversation and we hear from people. There'll be ideas perhaps that the subcommittees and the task groups didn't come up with, but that should be incorporated into this. A core principle for the engagement strategies that you'll see in just a minute is that we really want to partner back to that list of the stakeholder groups and who we interviewed. Really want to uh, go to organizations and say, can you help Can you help share this with your stakeholders? Do you have an event coming up that we could participate in, et cetera. Uh, eliminating the barriers to participation, going to people where they're at. So for example, given our timing, if we want to really engage uh, the agricultural community on farm events might be really key there. Um, we have money in our budget to uh, provide stipends for organizations that do help amplify, who might hold events for us. Um, and uh, again, we're really wanting to hear what are the solutions? Again, the, the solutions will come from the, those pathways work that everyone is developing. We're putting those ideas out so we'll be grounded in the science and, and all of the work you've been doing. We really want to hear where are the priorities for people? It's yet another uh, layer to consider when uh, going from that list of hundreds of things that could be done to what will be prioritized. So let me now move into the engagement strategy. Uh, and, and just a quick thing about process here. So this, this co-creation we mentioned um, of the engagement plan and of the process itself, we're gonna really be looking to all of you to be a key part of this. So as I mentioned, uh, we'll be looking to those uh, conversation partners, organizations, associations that are willing to help amplify via email, website, social media, uh, inviting us to events, post center. We're really going to need uh, your help because as we're hearing from different stakeholder groups, yes, we do have an event coming up. We'd love to have someone come from the process to have a conversation with us about it. So we'll be working with Jane and David to really uh, go into details on those opportunities and which subcommittee is in the best position to uh, send uh, someone out to uh, have that conversation. Our role will be to develop content, do the, the big uh, promotion via media, online, social media, um, to be supporting uh, partners, supporting uh, the council and subcommittee members who are, are doing that kind of tailored outreach. Um, and then working closely with the Agency of Natural Resources, Marion and Elle on content production, um, uh, you know, getting things on the website, rolling through social media, et cetera. So again, we really look forward to this and we're really going to rely on all of you to be active um, in sending email out to your own list when we're launching the effort and sending out the survey, uh, putting things out on your own social media, et cetera. So uh, in terms of the first phase, so as I mentioned, we're um, finalizing a draft report that our draft engagement plan that will go out for comment. Alongside of this, we have been developing a social media campaign and a website strategy. So this is all gonna be work that we're continuing in July and into August. Um, so um, we're gonna be creating uh, the social media con uh, campaign what this will include is messages for key stakeholders, copy for posts and stories, uh, overall the promotional strategy for how to connect with different key uh, stakeholder groups, a content calendar, and we do have uh, funds in the budget for paid social media as well. So that'll be included in the plan. Moving then to the website strategy, this is work already underway. Really let the uh, climate change website need to be updated to capture this work and provide a platform for people to engage in it. And then uh, we'll be developing a toolkit of materials that will support the public engagement process. Uh, and that will include short summaries of what Vermont is facing in terms of climate change, summaries of what are the potential uh, solutions being considered, 
infographics to support communications, web banners um, for the uh, Vermont website, but that also could be shared by partners. Uh, presentation decks. So those events I mentioned will have uh, a deck to support that or several decks, um, depending on the, the, the audience, as well as a facilitation guide. Um, if you're going to be out helping us uh, with events or those partner organizations, in some cases, we may be invited in, in some cases, they may go ahead. And so we'll be including uh, a form that captures the input from those events. So even if we're not directly involved with them, we're still getting that input. Be creating media materials for the launch of the campaign. I can just go back for one sec, that'd be helpful. Meredith, great. Um, and then uh, materials for events, so posters, uh, promotional materials. And really uh, important that we can do the translation of materials. So that's something that we're working with in our folks on uh, figuring out how we'll, we'll get that done. So uh, moving ahead, then we'll go into the launch of the public engagement campaign, the social media, the online survey, stakeholder events, partner support, and then we'll wrap up with a summary of findings. So just to break this down, into a little bit more detail. I already outlined what that social media campaign uh, will cover, but that's when we'll kick it off and be reaching out to all of you and partners to help amplify. Then we'll also be uh, putting together and launching the online survey that will, uh, again, gauge people's uh, concerns around risks, as well as um, their responses to uh, the this, this draft strategies that we're putting out there. These surveys will include an open-ended component because we really want to make sure we're giving people a chance to provide more input than what we're just the questions we're asking. So uh, moving to the next piece then. Um, so those stakeholder events, we have in our plan uh, seven total that we'll be organizing. So two of those will be online public focus groups with invitations sent out via those partner groups, all of you as well. And then we'll do five more um, for different stakeholders really around those most impacted and uh, those often not part of decision-making. And then uh, moving ahead, uh, we'll summarize those dialogue findings. And then again, creating that toolkit and identifying those opportunities for ANR, Climate Council, and subcommittee members to attend different events that organizations, associations are hosting where they're interested in having someone come and talk about the plan and, and have that conversation. Okay, the next uh, piece, uh, partner support. So we'll be reaching back out to that list of organizations, seeing if they're willing to uh, host events, have one of us come or host it on their own. And we'll be tracking that as mentioned. Okay, so the next piece. So at the end of this, we'll be uh, summarizing what we heard from this uh, you know, plan development phase. And we do have uh, in our calendar to meet again with each of the subcommittees to present that and have a conversation. Uh, about what we've heard. So that could influence uh, as you're moving ahead with the next phase of your planning. So then when there is an initial uh, climate action plan, we'll launch that um, with a media event, a media notice, social media again, uh, updating the website. Um, and then we've got a few other pieces which I will go into in just a minute. So moving into that initial launch plan. So. Uh, putting out a press release, uh, promoting social media, certainly all of you as partner groups to help us uh, amplify. Moving to the next piece. And then again, social media, this will be another piece and announcing that this is out and asking for those public comments. Be um, updating the website to align with the, what is in that plan. Make, again, make it easy for people to, to dive into that. And then we have a, a new piece here, which is using an online deliberation platform to take the key pieces of the plan and allow people to work through it and weigh in on the strategies that resonate most, what's missing, et cetera. 
and that'll be summarized. And another uh, key component of, of in the public. So um, the next piece, uh, we do have three uh, events uh, in the plan to share the initial plan and again, more input on it. Those will be uh, online and open to the public, but again, asking partner organizations to help uh, promote those. Uh, partner support continues through this. And then the next piece, is that we'll, uh, when the final plan, when public comment is finished, we'll be um, promoting that. I do wanna just notice that we'll sum up what we learn and share that back to subcommittees as well. So um, that is that evaluation report. So you can um, see in the next slide, the overall timeline. So we'll be wrapping up the moving into the material development next as mentioned launching in september really active september october getting on time to influence the initial plan and then moving into that initial plan and final plan promotion so i will stop there and welcome any questions Sorry, folks, my Zoom froze. Um, okay, thank you, Kara. That, that you can see a lot of thinking's been going into this um, and it's a complicated dance of timing, right? Between the work of the subcommittees, this work, getting ideas into a consolidated initial plan, a go, going back out to the public in December and January, et cetera. Okay. Um, questions. Secretary Young. Thank you, David. For some reason, I do not have the hand raising function with these meetings. <laughs> Maybe I'm missing it, but um, we'll work that out later. I'm just um, wondering how this time frame that you've just laid out, um, and maybe this is a question for Jane, works with the timeline that we've laid out um, for uh, December 1st and going back out for public engagement in December, understanding we have rulemaking um, requirements over the spring. <clears throat> yeah, I, I welcome um, <laughs> feedback here too, but um, the uh, Climate Access and RISE built their schedule around um, the idea that we would have the initial plan um, put together for the December 1st um, date as is and the understanding that uh, that further public engagement would still be needed around the comprehensive climate action plan over the winter time. But it, it does um, raise questions about how we would be still ga gathering input and feedback um, in an online polling process while also going into rulemaking um, and other components of the work during the legislative session. So yeah, maybe for some further thought and consideration is needed here. But the rest of the timeline um, as laid out is very much intentional with what I've communicated with Kara and Meredith and uh, Sarika. Julie, feel free to add on to that. Thank you. Oh, no, I that you spoke to that very well, Jane. Thanks. I have a, a separate question when we're ready. Okay, uh, let's just quick make sure that we're comfortable with where we stand in terms of how all this uh coordination is going to work right getting out doing this public engagement and stakeholder engagement work before we have uh the initial uh comprehensive plan out there allowing for some space in december january to do some additional engagement around it knowing that there won't simply be enough time in the fall to do all the engagement nor will the details be available around there any other comments to supplement Jane's thoughts on that? It, maybe I would add just one point if I, I might, David, yes. which is really just, I, I think it's important to look at the deadlines that are established in the Global Warming Solutions Act. I think we probably have some flexibility when it comes to sort of out year strategies, but there's also a pretty explicit requirement that ANR move into rulemaking 
um, with draft rules completed, I think by mid 2022. Um, and I, I, I don't, I think we're going to have to be clear with ourselves about what components can continue to be deliberated and worked on and what components largely need to be locked in um, by virtue of, of other requirements of the act. I'm really concerned that we um, conduct the outreach in a way that that's fully credible with the, the parts that we actually have the flexibility to move and adjust and the things that, that we simply don't. Um, and need to be transparent about that. And so there is going to be some bifurcation that I think has to occur um, post December 1st into to things that remain sort of open for discussion um, and things that, that, that there will be opportunity for discussion, but it may be through some of our more traditional um, public engagement processes, whether that's work by the legislature or the, the rulemaking process and the, the public comment periods that are available. Uh, to, to interested stakeholders and community members um, throughout the rulemaking process. Thanks, Julie. Um, why don't, um, just uh, Richard, quickly, is it on the same subject? It's about the outreach. I'll just make a point um, in asking in the initial outreach, uh, there was a lot of focus on impacts in Vermont, both harms in Vermont and benefits for Vermonters from action. And I think both are relevant. But a lot of the reason we're doing this is because of global harms. And I would just want to make sure that we don't assume that Vermonters care only about impacts in their own community. Uh, you know, in, in, our, in the opening rounds here. Um, thank you. Thanks, Richard. Uh, Secretary Moore, let me go back to you, because uh, I know you wanted to speak to something else as well. well it's, it's as much a, a question as a comment. Um, just uh, uh, wondering sort of what support from climate access is anticipated to be available um, in terms of some of this, this public in, engagement. Is it really facilitate, the idea being it's facilitating members of the council and the subcommittees um, to, to be the, the spokesperson, or is there sort of direct engagement anticipated by climate access staff in some of these conversations? Kara, do you, would you like to speak yes. to that? Sure. Yeah, so we have in our plan to host the seven events uh, as the plan is getting developed, and then the three once the initial plan is done. Uh, so those will be efforts that we're leading. And then we have a list coming together of different events that um, organizations would be happy to have someone from the process come to present and have that dialogue. So that is a list we'll be coming back to you and like working with Jane and David to say, who would be in the best position from the council or subcommittees to go to this event and who's available. So that's where we'd be coordinating with you and then uh, supporting whatever is needed for that conversation. So if we have to create something tailored for the audience, we would work with you to create those materials, think through, uh, have the conversation given who the stakeholders are. Uh, so that is support we would provide to all of you. Thanks, Kara. And I, I do want to actually just follow up on a, a couple of the other things that were mentioned. Richard, I think that's an excellent point about uh, the concern going beyond local. And I do have in that narrative structure a piece about Vermont, you know, being a leader on this issue and playing a, a, a role uh, to tackle this in a, on a bigger scale. So that is that tip to the, the global, but we'll definitely take your your point in. And then I, if there is an issue with the timing around the online deliberation platform, we could move that to earlier in the process. Thanks, Karen. Lauren? I really appreciate the idea of bringing in um, climate counselors and or subcommittee members into the, the seven pre-plan um, events that you have planned. I do think it would be really helpful because I'll just speak for myself. 
as both a counselor and a subcommittee member that my own exposure to these different outreach events would be really helpful to hear directly some of the conversations that are going on with the public. So maybe instead of just picking a handful of people, um, making it available to anybody who can make it from the process. Just throw that out there, something that I'd be interested in. Yeah, and I was um, actually trying to say something slightly different. So I think when, you know, we're talking to different associations and organizations and they have events coming up in the fall, like they want folks to come to those. So I think that's really like the key place for the council and the subcommittees. Um, for the events that we're hosting, so the two will be public. So of course anybody can attend, but um, you know, we'll also have the recordings available so they can be viewed later. Um, and then for the five that are really tailored for different stakeholders, that's where we're really going to part, want to partner with different organizations that have important stakeholder audiences. Uh, and I think we'll just have to see based on how that strategy develops, if it is uh, good to have from the Climate Council as part of that conversation. I, the one thing we do want to just make sure is that we're not loading up any of these events with so many uh, people who are uh, part of the process that it, it's not comfortable for the public, right? So that's just one thing that we have to pack. Great. Okay. Um, other thoughts or questions? We've got another minute or so um, on this. Um, thoughts about the public engagement work that's happening. Secretary Young. Um, thank you. I just wanted to make sure I understood your last um, comment, Kara, about the, or the last piece about the public engagement vis-a-vis -vis the private organizations. You said something about being comfortable with the private organizations, being comfortable with a public process, or I want to make sure I fully understand that. Yeah, so uh, with those five tailored events, we really want to make sure that we are focusing on stakeholders who are most impacted or who would be otherwise left out of the process. And um, it may be uh, a, advantageous to partner with an organization already trusted by that community or that already brings people together. And so we want to just be working with that organization to shape the event in the way that they feel will be most comfortable for their stakeholders and factor that into our design. Thank you. Great. Gina. Um, thanks, Kara. This has really been help, uh, helpful and I think you're gonna get a huge amount of really valuable information. Um, what's a concern to me, and maybe you explain this and I just don't get it, but who and when do you report your results to? So you've done one round. We meanwhile on cross sector are developing these strategies and we're hungry. I mean, I feel so badly that we don't have any public involvement yet and we're still gonna present something on the 26th. What's the mechanism? Is it gonna happen at the climate council level or at the subcommittee level that we start getting all this results that we will then yeah. act on? I, 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 do we have to wait till the fall um, at the end of the process? I'm just, I'm confused about that. And it's really- So in the, yeah, in the first phase when we're, we don't have the initial plan yet, we're just sharing out pathway information and getting input on that. We will summarize that. And then we do have uh, planned a meeting with each of the subcommittees to share that. So that would be um, in October that we would have all of those meetings and have present what we'd heard, but also have a discussion about it. What does that mean for the work that you're doing. And then again, when the initial plan is out in December and we're having people comment on it and we would be rolling up that input as well at the end of that and coming back to you. Um, but at any point, you know, we welcome folks reaching out to us in between, you know, if, if there are particular ideas you have, uh, things that you think, you know, you would like to do from an outreach standpoint and want our support on. 
So um, we are very open just in between these meetings to be in touch. Okay, so the work we're doing now until the fall is with the big caveat that we have not listened to the public. I mean, we have, but it's not a formal process and that we were gonna have this robust process. Okay, I just needed to sort of wrap my little brain around, around that reality. You know, and from uh, the 37 folks who we spoke with, um, there's a lot of appreciation that the public engagement is going to start before there is a plan. So even if it maybe feels a little uncomfortable, like we're going out with these and they're, they're not things that are actually are necessarily gonna be in the plan. We pretty much heard across the board, just the appreciation that people are being invited in at this phase. Mm -hmm. And I think as long as we're really clear on the language, these are drafts, you know, we want that input. Um, that 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 that's going to be helpful um and and yeah and so i don't think it's a prob problem that you'll have these pathways because you do need something to go out with to frame the conversation so i actually really like that the template and you know how that process is coming together because that's going to create really good content for this phase I see two more hands from Chris, oh, three more hands. Let's do those. I want to make sure we leave some time for public comment as well. So Chris, go ahead. Sure, I just, one of the things that I think we just need to be, <clears throat> be aware of the possibility of is since, you know, the, the really, I mean, we've definitely had allowed a lot of public access, but we've not done a lot of public engagement yet. So just a heads up that, and I'm just basing this on years of working with communities on planning, um, once you start presenting the ideas out there, they may get torn to shreds. They may get just absolutely ripped apart right down to the foundation and we have to keep working on rebuilding them. So it is entirely possible that the report we put out in December will say, here are the pathways and, and, uh, and, and strategies and all these other great, great things, recognizing that a lot of the public engagement is really gonna get underway now. And so to some extent, this is, what we've been saying all along, but this is going to be an iterative process. This is an initial report. Um, a lot of it's based on, you know, science and everything else that we've been talking about. But but now we are looking for you, the public, to tell us what you think about this. And I, and I just say that because I know sometimes, especially working with um, kind of the higher up you go in the governance chain, you know, like, you know, from local to state to region to, uh, to, to you know, to feds, people kind of want to know exactly where they're going before they get there and everything be nice and clean. And that's, this is not going to probably be a very nice and clean process. So just wanted to throw that out. Thanks, Chris. I see Kai nodding her head as well. Sue? Yeah, I share Chris's concerns and we've all been very uncomfortable with moving before, but needing to do so. And so, accepting where we are, but I think being open. I guess the piece that Gina also alluded to that I don't know, and I don't think we're gonna talk about today, but is then we have all this comment and what is the process and role of the council in weeding through um, and prioritizing in developing a plan? Um, so that's yet another process that I think we need to think about in line with, um, and maybe you have the engagement, but I'm not clear on that and how that all fits in. But I don't think we need to decide anything. I'll just be looking forward to having a deeper conversation on that as well. Thanks. Thanks, Sue. Yeah. Kaya? Thanks. I appreciate the opportunity to speak on this. Um, yeah, it is going to be super rough. It's going to be really, really rough because there may be things that we may love and think are the best concepts ever. And we may find out that that's not resonant with the public. Um, what I'm worried about right now, though, um, Kara, and like the team, um, the public engagement team is that even though we're trying to frame it, that we're still doing outreach, we're still trying to get your good ideas. It still is that that disconnect is going to still be very real right, that we will have collected all this information that people are going to bring out that first iteration of uh, these are our best ideas that are not going to be connected back to that work at all. And so it's going to be a discordant message that I worry that if we don't manage it properly, and I'm not trying to like, 
yeah, I'm not trying to suggest that we're somehow being disgenuine by saying, you know, trying to control the narrative. Like that's not what we're trying to do, but in being vulnerable in the ways that we're gonna need to, recognizing that we did go ahead and dove right into doing this work without talking to impacted communities and without getting that input and brought it up as a first blush that is now in public record. That's always the nervousness, right? So, um, so that's just gonna be real and I'm not quite sure it, and that's not all y'all to manage as well, but it's just something I think to just name um, that is going to be a dynamic that we'll also have to wrestle with between here and January. Thanks, Kai. I, I wanted to just respond to that, if that's okay, David. Sure. Um, yeah, I, I really appreciate your comment. And so the initial stakeholder um, conversations we had with the 37 people, we weren't just asking them about strategies for engagement. We were asking them, what are you concerned about? What do we need to be thinking about? And so we are rolling all of that up into an initial plan that we will be sharing with this group shortly and also getting your feedback on. So um, to Gina's point, there will be some early data that we're able to share in, uh, before October, right? So this month that um, hopefully can, can give you a sense of what we heard from the public when we talked to them. Um, in this initial stage. And it's not, you know, it's not perfect. It's not a huge cross section, but it is a lot of communities that we, we want to think really carefully about and prioritize. Thanks, Rika. That's really helpful. Um, I know I want to leave some comment, uh, time for public comment. I see a hand from Secretary Young. Go ahead, Secretary Young, and then let's definitely take yeah, a comment. If I, I, I really have appreciated today's <laughs> conversation, especially the, the latter part of it. Um, I'm, I do share concerns with how we roll out the next agenda and what we're presenting and how we're presenting it for all the reasons stated. So um, I'm hoping that we can get a redraft of the agenda that takes all of these concerns into account and get it out to the steering committee, you know, sooner rather than later. So, so we can work through um, some of those concerns that I at least have been hearing. And, and that's my comment. <clears throat> Thanks. That's Absolutely. And so the steering committee has another um, meeting prior to the 26th to figure out the, the agenda. So that'll be our, our job. Um, I know, um, let's just do some public comment here. I know Ian Hitchcock, you've got your hand up and you put two comments in the chat. So let's go to you first. So I know you've been eager to get in. Um, Ian, uh, go ahead, please. I appreciate that, David, and, and thanks for letting me uh, spam the chat as well. I, I wanted to kind of echo some of the themes that I've heard come up earlier, both around um, wanting to ensure that people understand how their public comment will be utilized and will actually manifest into the po possibility for, you know, for changes to the plan itself. Right? That, that's always something that I want to consider and want to make sure that we can tell people clearly, given the timelines for delivering this plan and kind of the need for rulemaking that, that Secretary Young alluded to and all those kind of the complicated dance that you talked about, David. I'm just wanting to make sure that we thought through, in addition to just getting public comment, um, you know, how will that public comment actually manifest or actually have an opportunity to change the substance and words on the page? Um, I'm sure the people here are, you know, thinking thoughtfully about that. And I, and I trust very much the intentions of people to make sure that that, that comment can actually influence things and it's not public comment for its own sake and kind of checking a box, but I just wanted to, to raise and flag that. Um, and I also wanted to just highlight one of the comments I made in the chat, which is I would love to see as the public engagement process really gets underway in less of a kind of self-selected way, um, kind of a, a both end strategy in terms of both people who have been, um, you know, traditionally marginalized and left out of these spaces, but I also don't want to leave out people who have been engaged in these spaces. Um, I'm thinking of just, you know, for one example, the network of energy committees that I helped to um, organize and they are kind of chomping at the bit. They've been, you know, wanting to engage in this process um, and haven't seen opportunities to do so to date. And so as we're thinking about kind of what some of those self-selected groups are, um, particularly for the, those five or the seven kind of meetings that, that rise in climate access are pulling together. Um, just wanting to make sure that that door is opened as well um, for people that bring a great degree of, of passion, um, interest, and local expertise to these issues um, who may not necessarily fit the, 
definitions of who's been reached out to you to date. Um, I would just want to make sure that's considered as well. So thank you. Thank you, Ian. Thanks. Are there other members of the public who'd like to make a comment? Feel free to do so in the chat as well. It's a good time to do that. Okay, I'm not seeing additional hands. Abby, did you want to comment on something? I'm trying to think of how to frame this. Um, I guess I just want to briefly respond a little bit to Ian's point and, and just say that there, there has been a, a public portal and the, the meetings of the subcommittees are open and there is public comment. And I think part of the intent of this process is to combat somewhat what I feel I can personally attest to having witnessed play out that when people do not have the organizational capacity or the means with which to engage in these processes, such as the way that, yes, there's been an amazing um, and good faith effort and work and passion within organizations and people of higher capacity who I'm sure are being slightly driven by this process. But I would offer that that is a part of the learning process and of trying to engage in a process that manifests itself in a bit of a different way, which is what I believe we're trying to do here. And it's going to take patience and perseverance and it's really difficult. Um, and I apologize for that, for the people who I'm sure are, are struggling with that, but I think we have to really remember that these people that we are trying to reach in this process, they have not been reached. They do not have the capacity to come forward to this process normally. And that is why we are trying so hard to, to elevate their voices in this way at this point. Thanks, Abby. Yeah. So on that note, I think we're we're nearing the end here. I would propose that we had a, like a, a minor agenda item about proving prior minutes. We can just push that to the next time the steering committee meets. We're a little over time already. Um, if folks are okay with that. Um, I think this is the place to end this meeting. Um, I'll just turn it over to Jane and secretaries uh, Moore and Young if there's any concluding comments that you'd like to make, any of the three of you? I don't have anything to add to my last comments, so I'll defer to Secretary Moore. Thanks. Don't have anything further either. Okay. Jane, anything on your end? No, thanks. Okay, so just quick next steps on this. You're gonna get a full sort of written draft version of what Kara just presented um, in a short period of time. I don't know exactly when, but that will be coming your way. Um, <clears throat> you will get uh, assistance with Jane and Marion on developing these PowerPoints that will be presented on the 26th. And the steering committee will meet again prior to the 26th to really get the agenda right um, for that upcoming meeting. Um, and prior to that meeting, we'll put another draft version out there um, that we can discuss and, and finally approve in the steering committee. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for going a little late here. I really appreciate everybody. It's, what an interesting conversation this was. Take care. Have a good week. We'll be in touch. <laughs>